Hey guys, so I'm going to try and show you how to make one of these absolute fluff monster petticoats. They're really easy to make and fairly cheap, so um, enjoy! The main materials you're going to need are medium weight tulle, some a um, edging lace, some satin fabric, some elastic, lots of thread, and maybe some dye if you want to do a colourful lace. See? I dyed my white lace there. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is cut up the tulle. I ordered 12 meters of tulle and I knew I'd need it in a 4 meter and 8 meter section to fit the tiers um, to be able to cut them out correctly. So for now I'm just going to cut the 12 meters into 8 meters and 4 meters. Next up is cutting. I'm going to be using mannequin tape as guides on my table in 10 centimeter increments so I know where to cut through my tulle. I can see the lines through the tulle so it means I can cut really quickly and pull the tulle over the lines and get the cutting done really fast. So my tool is folded over, so I only have to do half the width, which is half the cuts, which saves a lot of time. So I'm going to be doing a few 10 centimeter cuts, and then one 30 centimeter cut at the end. This is in the four meter section, so that 30 centimeters will be sewn up later. So you want to make sure you've got all your lines down, and then feed your tool down the back of your table. This is so as you're cutting, you can gradually pull it towards yourself. It is a lot quicker than trying to do anything else like measuring tulle or using a proper pattern because tulle's a nightmare to cut. But this makes it a lot, lot quicker, so I would do this in about 10 minutes. It is handy to have a couple of weights to hand to keep the fabric stable as you do cut it because um, it does like to slip around. But make sure that the edge of the fabric is always matching up with your edge line. Um, this will keep your cuts straight. Once all those are cut, I'll take those two 30 centimeter pieces and sew them together. This will make one of my eight meter by 30 centimeter pieces. I'm just gonna do that now before I lose the pieces entirely. And then I'll change my cutting guides. So I'll take it off so there's 30 centimeter gaps. There'll be two 30 centimeter gaps and a 15 gap. The 15 gap is where the fold of the fabric is. So when the fabric is unfolded, you get a 30, 30 centimeter piece. So here I'm cutting the 30 centimeter by eight meter sections. In total, I have six of those. So next I need to sew on the lace edge. Now to make life easier, my lace is wrapped around a loo roll and I will tape a pencil to my table so that the loo roll can spin as I sew the lace on. This makes it a lot easier than unraveling it or detangling it as you go. So to actually sew the lace on, I've just matched up the straight edge of the tulle with the straight edge of the lace. I'm sewing about five millimeters in from the seam. Um, this is really simple to do and I'm just gonna do the whole lot on a chain. This is a lot quicker than doing it bit by bit. Because you're doing it all on a chain, um, it means all the pieces will be connected and you'll effectively be doing one long stitch. I recommend putting in a fresh bobbin before you do anything like this. And now I'm gonna fold the lace over to do the hem. I'm just gonna fold the lace up and the tulle will fold up with it. And then I'm gonna top stitch down on the lace, which will create the hem. This makes a really nice clean edge for the lace. If you're feeling like a real perfectionist, you can go and trim the tulle before you do this, but the tulle is barely visible in a single layer and it doesn't fray, so you don't need to be so perfectionist with it. So once all six pieces are hemmed, I'm going to start ruffling it. I'm using a Genome Ultimate Ruffler Foot. If you don't have one, you can do hand gathering. I'll cover that later. So my settings on the ruffler foot were to gather in every stitch and the depth of the gathers is six. So that means it's gonna gather the fabric about half its length, which means it should then fit to the next tier, which is half the length. Um, I will adjust it slightly as I go if I think it, the gathers are too loose or too dense. Um, but yeah, just run it through the machine. This makes it gather really, really quickly. So 
So once I've gathered each section, I will immediately attach it to the next piece. Honestly, this is so I don't lose everything and things get connected faster. But I'm going to use a normal foot and what I'll do is I'll put the ruffle bit on the fab ruffle bit of fabric on the machine and then I'm going to put that 10 centimeter 4 meter strip over the top of that. I'll just then sew the 4 meter piece directly on top. Um, the lengths should match up. At the ends on this first one there is about a 15 centimeter shortfall on the gather. That's fine, I just cut the extra length off and when I put the, the layers of the petticoat together I'll just ease them all down to the shortest length. 15 centimeters is about fine. I'd say anything over 20 you might want to let out some gathers and soften the gather a bit more so you get some more length out of it. Now you want to make sure you've got the flat layer on top of the gathered layer because then you can control the gathers more and it actually so it's a lot easier if you have a smooth layer on top. And I'm going to overlock that edge, um, just a normal overlock. If you don't have an overlocker, I would recommend using a zigzag stitch or pinking shears to create a nice, neat edge. It just neatens up a bit, and it's handy for the next step. So the next step after this is to quite simply turn that overlocking or finished edge up into the 10 centimeter piece and top stitch it down. This makes this seam a lot stiffer and a lot bouncier and helps build volume. As you can see, yeah, it's just finished there. And I've also stitched up the sides and I'm just gonna overlock that. This means I'm beginning to get my tiers finished, ready for assembly. Um, after this, I'll quickly show you how to do a proper finish on overlocking so that it does not unravel. So to do a proper finish of overlocking, you get that little tail that's been left over and you turn it up into the fabric and quickly go over it with a very small zigzag stitch. This holds the tail of the overlocking up and it stops it unraveling and coming undone. And then once you've done this, you can just clip off all the loose threads and that's your overlocking finished and fine and it's going to be a lot more durable than if you just snip the threads. So next I will be pairing up all my layers um, and I'll be pinning them together and then I'll be sewing them together. As I said before, you might have some layers that are a little bit shorter, that's fine. In the scheme of things, 15 centimeters and 4 meters isn't much, so you can sort of just gather down the slightly bigger ones to fit the smaller ones. It doesn't really make a difference at this point. Once my layers are paired up, I'm going to run a gather stitch along the top. Now a gather stitch is a very long stitch, so it's the longest stitch setting you have and it will be two of these stitches next to each other. And then you'll be pulling on these to create your gathers. Hand gathers are so much prettier than machine gathers. I don't care what anyone says, I prefer these, they just take a lot longer. I suggest trying to take out the pins as you go, but this fabric's kind of crazy, so having the pins in does stop it shifting underneath. Um, I do hate having pins in this because I always end up stabbing my hands a lot. And I do apologise for the terrible camera work. I'm still not good with the camera and the petticoat is huge. So now I'm doing that second row of stitching. It's about 5mm away from the first and again on the longest stitch. On these stitches, do not backstitch, and you want to make sure you've left long tails for you to be able to pull on. 
So when the stitching's done, we're gonna take those tails and we're gonna tie them in knots. This isn't necessary, but it does stop the, the thread slipping and coming out of place. So it's easier to tie the knots in and then you don't have to worry about losing all your progress. Do this on both sides of the fabric so you'll have a knot on the top and a knot below. And then we're gonna grab one side, so one set of threads, and we're gonna keep pulling and pulling and pulling. So this is gathering the fabric down to the correct length. As you might be able to see, I have my meter ruler on the table. Because I'm gonna be gathering it down to two meters now, I can actually hold the, um, the loop taut against the meter ruler and check if it's roughly the right length. It's quicker to do all this gathering on one direction first, and then we'll cut those threads, tie another knot, and then redistribute the volume of the fabric around. So now I'm going to get, um, smooth these gathers around the whole layer of the skirt. If you want more volume in the back, this is where you'd want to do that, so you can direct all these gathers towards the seam at the back, and then leave the front flat. This takes forever. But once we've got three sets of that done, so all six layers have been made into pairs, it's time to start pinning them together. I will be pinning about every two centimeters and you will ruin your hands with pins with this. Um, but you need lots of pins to hold all those like loops and frills and gathers together because this thing really wants to move around. And you can actually slowly see like the pink fluffy donut coming into shape. And then once that's done, I'm going to do another line of stitching just around the top edge of these this petticoat section. This just holds it in place and makes the petticoat. This is a horrible stitch to do. I would suggest doing it on a one or two length stitch because they're stronger, but it does take forever. And I would say try and take pins out as you go. It's a bit tricky because it means having to think about a few things at once. You also need to make sure that there's no fabric folded up underneath where you're stitching. So every couple of inches check that there's nothing caught underneath because I've done that so many times and had meters of unpicking to do. Okay, that's the bulk of the petticoat done. Go pop it on your mannequin for some satisfaction and seeing the fluff you've created. And now to make a lining. My lining is gonna be four meters by 30 centimeters, slightly shorter than the skirt, so it's not visible. I'm gonna do the exact same process of joining the loop at the side, and then I'm gonna overlock the bottom edge and the top edge and um, apply the lace in the same method that I used previously on the other layers. Here, I've got a horrible crepe fabric. Um, you'll soon see that swap to a much nicer satin. And again, I'm going to do the gathering stitches, the hand gathering, to gather it down to two, set, to two meters. This is so it will be joined in the same waistband. Now to make the waistband, I've got a piece that's 1.5 meters long, which is double my waist roughly, and I've overlocked each short edge separately, and then I'll sew those together. You need to be able to unpick a hole in this seam later, which is why those edges were overlocked separately. And then I'm gonna quickly fold it over, iron it, and do a little line of stitching around the top just there that makes it neat. So once it's pressed and stitched into place, I'm gonna take some inch wide elastic and measure a channel for a meter stitch so this elastic can run through the waistband. And then I'm just gonna do a really long line of stitching. Um, again, a short stitch length, and I need to be able to cut into that seam at the waistband later. That's where the elastic's gonna be fed through. Um, I do quite like having that top little stitch, it makes the elastic sit a lot nicer in the waistband and look prettier when it's worn. For the sake of cleanliness, I'm going to overlock that edge of the waistband. Again, if you don't have an overlocker, I would say use a zigzag stitch or pinking shears. I 
and then I'll attach the waistband to the lining. The lining is 2 meters, the waistband is 150. So I'm going to slightly gather down by hand the lining as I go. I need to pin and attach the waistband to the wrong side of the lining. So the wrong or dull side of the lining is where we're going to be attaching the waistband. This is so when we turn the layers out, um, the pretty side of the lining is facing outwards and it traps all the seam allowances and raw edges. Okay, now it's time for the bit that sucks. So I'm going to be pinning the lining and waistband to the donut of poof. I'm going to be pinning it with the correct side of the lining facing out. And again, I'm going to be slightly hand gathering and pinning down the um, the size of the pink donut because that's two meters and I need to get it down to 150. I'm going to be adding more volume to the back so that I have a nice, you know, fluffy butt. And then I've got to stitch this line. Again, you won't see this on the machine, I'm sorry, but I did it on a very short stitch for security and it was about one centimeter in from the edge. This is a horrible thing to film, I'm very sorry, I didn't capture it well. Go take out all of your pins and then you can turn that lining inside and you'll see the waistband pops out of the inside like that and your petticoat is almost finished. And then we add elastic. I'm adding a piece of elastic that's initially 30 inches long. This is going to be too long, I already know, but I'm going to seal the edges with a lighter so that it doesn't fray and then use a unpicker to unpick a hole in that waistband. And then I'm going to get a really big safety pin and feed it through that channel. Now, I've got a couple of tricks when it comes to using the safety pins. Do get a big one, because if it comes undone while you're feeding it through, it's so annoying. So start feeding it through, and you need to keep stretching it to get the fabric to gather around the length. But then when you've got a tail of elastic, pin it to the petticoat. This stops you accidentally feeding all of the elastic through the channel and then having to go all the way around to get it back out again. So keep feeding that elastic through. When you get it out the other side, pin it into place and check the tightness. I've used elastic that I know is going to be too long, but I actually ended up reducing the length of the elastic to 24 inches. This is because it's got so much strain to hold from the weight of the petticoat that it will sit in an elasticated state. So you probably want to take your natural waist and take like six inches off just to hold the strain of the petticoat. And then to sew it up, I'm gonna pull a lot of elastic out, overlap those two pieces, so one is sitting on top of the other, and then th do a couple of lines of stitching just over this. Again, cut the ends down and go over it with a lighter to seal them. So after you've sewn that elastic into place, just stretch out the waistband of the petticoat so that the elastic pops back into position. Make sure the overlapped sewn bit does wiggle back through the waistband hole and then sew up the waistband. Now, one bonus step that I do have for the end of the petticoats. Get a can of spray starch and spray the petticoat while it's fresh on the mannequin. Lift it up, make sure the starch gets inside all the layers of the petticoat. Get underneath, really coat that thing. And then get a hairdryer and get it on your hot setting and blow up from underneath. This sets the starch and this generally helps the petticoat to not deflate. And that's my petticoat finished. So there, I left it overnight for 12 hours and you can sort of see it didn't move. So yeah, these are super fluffy. You can store them, you can ruin them, you can keep them in vacuum bags, but they are my favorite things to make because they're just so satisfyingly poofy and have great volume without needing a hoop. 